I'm really happy to be here, and I'm really happy to introduce as a guest on my program now, Robert Wagner. And Robert Wagner is a person who is known uh, as the Internet Skeptic. Mm -hmm. And he's been around in New York. He's in from Ohio, apparently. And he's got a lot to say about global warming and other issues. And Robert, welcome very, very much to Conversation. Well, thanks for having me. It's been a uh, very enjoyable trip to New York. They've been running you through the ringer here. You've been, you've been, you've been really before the cameras a lot. But yes, we've I done think a, the only quite a few shows. they put through such a thing was Mr. Fitzer when he was here. Yeah, it's yeah. it's been a uh, interesting time. They've been tr trying to convert me to vegetarianism, communism, global warmingism. Communism, so I've been uh, I've been uh, really put the, through the ringer. Here. And they're trying to convert you away from your core belief system and a, you know uh, understanding, uh, which is. Uh, glo well, f what I came here for was to talk about global warming. We, okay, we, we want to. Yeah, we want to talk about that. But I wonder if you mm -hmm. could. Okay, that's mm -hmm. the global warming mm -hmm. and that issue. It's a big issue. Well, with Mr. Gore and everything now bringing up mm -hmm. inconvenient truth and so on. But I wonder, could you? Because just bear with me, please. Mm -hmm. I'd appreciate it if you sure. could just share where you was born and raised, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, and a little of the education, and we'll wade into it from the perspective of your personality as it evolved through okay. your lifetime. Okay. Um, grew up in Ohio, born, bred there. Um, I uh, went to Miami University of Ohio for my undergraduate. Um, in what? Uh, economics and finance. Business. Economics and finance. Okay, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, then I picked up a Master of Economics um, through the University of Oklahoma. Then I picked up a doctor's degree in optometry through the University of, o of uh, uh, Uni Ohio State University College of Optometry. Um, and then I picked up what's called a CFA, a Chartered Financial Analyst, and I worked as a portfolio manager for the last nine or so years. Okay, that's so, really interesting. The so opt optometry? Went from optometry into portfolio management. Uh, so I am not a climate s scientist. Right. I am not a... a um, You've learned a lot of systems thinking, but, though. But I've it? learned a, a lot as far as multivariable modeling, uh -huh. uh, a, a solid foundation in the sciences. Um, and that's how I got interested in yeah. global warming, is because every time I looked into the conclusions that they reached, mm -hmm. and I looked at the data that they were providing, I felt that the data that they provided wasn't... Um, wasn't supporting their conclusion. That's a very interesting observation. That's a very interesting thing. But I wonder the optometry. Mm -hmm. How did you go from, if I may, you know, finance and so forth, into optometry? Optometry has a lot to do with optics and that sort of thing. And optics, physiological. It's called yeah. actually physiological optics. So uh -huh. it's an interesting field in that it combines the hard sciences like physics right. with the biological sciences because it's a healthcare field. Um, it also right. changes a lot of diagnostic practices. So when Al Gore says the earth has a fever, there's a certain diagnostic approach that you would use to say, okay, it's got a fever, let's go rule out or find a common cause. You think it's a good idea to try and find uh, commonality or pattern recognizing between optics and physics or between disciplines, individual disciplines, or is it better to try and specialize in a particular thing so we really get it down? Well, I or think do you like the idea of pattern recognizing between the disciplines generally, a comprehensive yes. kind of overview? Yes, and matter of fact, a great mm -hmm. example of that is the um, the um, Nash equilibrium that you find in economics. It was developed by a mathematician. Mm -hmm. So what I think, I think, and that what I can bring to this discussion mm -hmm. is that um, I provide a, a, a viewpoint that has a broad field of, of knowledge and science, whereas mm -hmm. I wasn't trained in the environmental sciences to, certain, to look for certain things. And the best example I can... I was. I took a doctorate in geography. And geography hardly mm -hmm. is a discipline anymore because it's so comprehensive. You can get a, you can be interested in anything mm -hmm. and get away with it. Economic geography, political, sure. intellectual geography, you, know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that kind of thing. So it's very comprehensive mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But they don't even have those fields anymore. Yeah. Hardly, but there's hardly, Harvard discontinued it because it's so, it's like the master, no, what is it, a, a master, no, what's the, the saying? Uh, jack of all trades and master of none, none yeah. thing. If you get too far out, sure. you've got the people who are very specialized, and they don't want to see their specialized linear yeah. regression or linear uh, projection mm -hmm. within a larger context because it's been they, they, they've really got it all narrowed down in a specialized sense. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It applies yeah. to economics, I think. Sure. And well, probably does to your global warming thing, I would think. Yeah. Perhaps. Well, the, the best analogy I can give is if you're trained in, in many of these fields, especially the environmental fields, you're, you're brought up to think a certain way. You're taught a certain thing, and, and I see it at Ohio State all the time. Uh -huh. you, I mean, there's, it's, it's almost, um, you, you're just taught to believe and to see the world in a certain manner. Right. Environmentalists have a tendency to point the finger that man is destructive to the environment, look for a cause by man. 
big theme big theme yeah sure but and and, and i can give you a, a you know like if, for instance the best example i can say is that, and the way i always put it is if all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail so if yes you, there's if, a saying if, to that effect if, yeah. if you're taught that yeah. man's the cause you're always going to look for man to be the cause so if you go see a surgeon and a great example is if you go see a surgeon and you have a cancer what's that surgeon going to say we need to cut it out if I mean, he's a surgeon. If he's a surgeon. Now, <laughs> yeah, now, if, if you go, now, if, now, if you go yeah. see an oncologist, yeah, what's yeah. he going to say? Yeah. I need to treat it with medicine. Right. What I'm here to do is I'm, I'm going to say, you've heard the environmentalists, the surgeons. Now you're going to get a second opinion on global warming. Let's go talk to an internist and think about, is there another alternative to this problem? Now, those environmentalists who have a, a construct, let's say, a construct or even a meme that goes into cultural things like memes, you know, and that kind of thing, they've got a... They've got a uh, a story or they've got a, a narrative mm -hmm. and this would apply to anything in a sense and they really don't want to have that narrative and they've got it down mm -hmm. and they and they're going to be making claims to legitimacy intellectual legitimacy mm -hmm. for their claims sure and that's the thing i suppose that goes on a lot in the in the in the world intellectual sure. debate between ideas and so forth you're yep. bringing a different perspective than the one that a lot of people are asking us to accept on faith yeah. as uh ontologically mm -hmm. true sure. or a part of a reality that is a, a yeah. truth right and when you hear my presentation you have to open your mind because I know what everyone's been told but I think if you listen to the arguments I, I use their research none of this is my original research mm -hmm. and I would say don't take it, any of my words you can get all this research right off the internet or get a copy of the presentation from Paula uh -huh. um, but I just simply give an alternative story, and I think my story is far more convincing uh -huh. than the theory of CO2 causing global warming. That's a lot of what argumentation and discussion of issues is about, isn't it? Sure. To put form of a paradigm, in mm -hmm. a sense. You have, it goes to a sort of, almost like a paradigm, sure. in terms of your perception as opposed to that other. Mm -hmm. But that thing about man, destroy, or man having an effect on the world, mm -hmm. you came back to, that's like a pre major premise, in a way. Sure. And I would say man is having a major impact on the world. A unique so I don't disagree. If I may, a unique capability in a certain sense, if you think about all the creatures mm -hmm. that, that have evolved and the various, you know, they've had that tremendous variety of things that have come out of the evolutionary process. So mankind is really very unique in his ability to extend his consciousness into the environment through what has now come to be called technology and make the environment different than in an Eden-like sense is given, which is the lot almost genetically necessarily so of practically all of the creatures that exist they confront the environment uh, around them and we were nested in nature I suppose when we first came out of the Serengeti plain 200,000 years ago as a species mm -hmm. but we've been able to affect the environment in a uniquely critical way of making it other than what in an Eden like sense is given don't you think um, characteristic well, are you saying, of the tool are, maker are you saying that man is the only one that can change nature like that Uniquely, so beavers make dams, I notice, mm -hmm. and birds do make nests, and that affects things. And there is a well, thing about a butterfly fluttering his wings makes changes everything. But well, in a sense, I don't know any other creature that has had the unique capability that we have, particularly that is coming into fruition now, to where the important paradigm questions on that issue of man's role in changing the face of the earth. Well, I, I, can, I, 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 d I definitely agree that man is changing the face of the earth. Uniquely and, and, and so. Uniquely so. Uh -huh. I, I, I say mother animals themselves can do a lot of destruction themselves. I saw it out in Hawaii. I used to live out in Hawaii. Did and you? the wild boars have ravaged those snake, the um, the forest out there. Also, the ants have they almost eliminated all the insects those out there. Those driver ants are something else. So they come up out yeah, of Yeah, so when, when one species somehow wanders into <laughs> a, an environment they've never been before, they can destroy the environment. So yeah, I've but seen that. No, but they've had a po they have a power to do that within sure. their environment, but they don't have a power to, in a certain sense, change the environmental context itself. They can't extend their consciousness through tools, such as we've been able to no, do since yes. we picked up the first act. Not through tools, yes, you're right. And, well, then, and, then we, and that's a big theme in the evolution of cultural uh, Yes, we have, we, uh, animals will never produce a pyramid, they'll never produce a Empire State Building. Right, and I nor agree will they that. ever get to, maybe... They'll never build cities. Maybe will they ever be able to do in a certain self-reflective consciousness under, uh, be able to contemplate, we can't know, can we, the way animals think and everything, but they can't really contemplate the larger issues like what's it all about, Alfie? or why am I here, or these larger uh, existential issues, I, I think. We'll probably never know. 
we'll probably I, I'll, never know. Yeah. Yeah, you know. But but I can you can along the theme of global warming because yeah. they're making the claim that we're now extending our consciousness with such a degree of capability that we're having a major effect on these forces or these uh, aspects sure. of nature. And the claim is that uh -huh. the major force that we've done is we've oh. produced an excessive amount of CO2. That excessive amount of CO2 is trapping the heat, leading to global warming. That's, That's one the thing. commonly accepted theory. Okay, and so, yeah, we can affect the environment. They can do that. And another thing, that, that's a major premise that's being advanced by the uh, inconvenient truth. That's what we're going to talk primarily yeah. about. But this thing, other thing we could do, you know, it gets at a certain point where that ability to affect the environment, a lot of that has been led by, hasn't if you think historically and comprehensively, a lot of it's been led by um, weaponry, technology, technological advance, mm -hmm. you know, or, or geopolitical, well, or even corporate co uh, v rivalry to get market share or something mm -hmm. like that. But now it's reached a point where that technology on the destructive side has reached a point where they apparently tell us mm -hmm. that if they unleash the weapons that exist, it's mm -hmm. the end of the species. Did you realize that? I, well, I have no doubt if they had went to a nuclear war. You have no them. doubt of that? I mean, if you don't think there'd be a couple survivors in New Guinea of our species and so forth like that? It would depend on how extensive a war it was. But, well, but I, I, I would imagine that, it, um, I mean, I, I'm not arguing that man can't do a lot of harm. Matter of fact, my argument is, in oh. fact, mm -hmm. that man has changed nature and man has done some things that are contributing to global warming. Mm. The problem I have is that what Al Gore will tell you is that it's us producing CO2, I would argue it's a bigger change and it's what we've done to, per, to, dis, to disrupt nature's normal growing patterns because nature is the major producer of CO2 and more importantly water vapor and we've done something that has tremendously impacted the water vapor contact in the air far more than what we've done to impact the CO2 content of the air. That's getting into a specialized aspect of the overall theme, which is okay. Yeah. That's a specialized thing, and it's the thing, and it's thing that's politically in the air now. You think Mr. Gore is going to run for president? I think he's using um, this ar this case as a <coughs> springboard to uh, run for office. He's got a lot of credentials. I pulled out that birth that I had gotten it. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. That Earth in the Balance. Earth in the Balance. He's got his his environmental bona fides are really very very real. Well, I saw a thing on e C-SPAN the other night, and they were talking, it was 96, and President Clinton and Mr. Gore, and they were talking really seriously about global warming then. Mm -hmm. you know? they, they did talk a lot, mm -hmm. they, and that's, they, I will give you credit that they did talk a lot. They did very little, though. They weren't, they weren't able, I guess, politically to do that. That health care thing that Hillary fell through. Well, and you know they had a lot of uh, political difficulty. Then he had I'm Monica talking about the Lewis Kyoto Treaty. Lot, yeah, Kyoto Treaty. The Kyoto Treaty. He didn't even pass up to the Senate to try to be ratified. Uh huh. Um, uh -huh. And so, you know, as far as talking a good talk, did a phenomenal job. Walking uh -huh. the walk, did absolutely nothing. Yeah, not the first time. Matter of fact, I'm, if you look at the CO2 content under uh, President Clinton, it went up tremendously. The CO2, carbon dioxide, sure. right, that kind of thing, and uh, that's part of their basic premise or. Pro that's one of the major premises of their overall yeah. paradigm premise that they yeah. make is this idea of CO2 or carbon dioxide mm -hmm. through fossil fuels largely. Burning of fossil fuels. Burning of fossil fuels. Yeah. Okay, well, th so that's a that's a major thing. And that's the thing, you've somehow become very interested in that issue. Yeah, I, I, I took a look at it and I looked at all the various greenhouse gases, looked at the sources of all the greenhouse gases. Uh -huh. And if you do that, I think you realize real quick that it's not CO2 causing the problem. It's not CO2 causing the problem of the problem being, what is the problem you're referring to? The problem is they're, they're claiming that we have a phenomenon called the greenhouse gas effect and that's leading to global warming and they're attributing to the IPCC itself attributes the majority of greenhouse global warming due to the greenhouse vet effect due to man, namely CO2. Oh, I man's see. Production, that man's production of CO2 leads to trapping heat, leads to global warming. Um, that's the theory. Okay. Well, there, there's been warming and in, in cooling cycles throughout. We had the ice ages, didn't we? We had an End ice age just a few hundred years ago. ago. We had what's a little called a little ice, ice age. A little ice age in mm -hmm. Europe. They said that they had. Not the only in Europe, we had it here. When you watch Washington crossing the Delaware, uh -huh. he's crossing a frozen Delaware. The Delaware no longer freezes. No, it wouldn't. Social revolutions occur during cooling periods, a little ice age. The French Revolution, our revolution, people starve and die during cooling periods. So 
If anything, we should be thankful that we're having a warming period. More importantly, we also had the medieval warming period, and we know that the Vikings inhabited Greenland. And they're not, inha I mean, they, they couldn't be farming up there today, but they did it just a few hundred years ago. They were in Greenland, and they ca I think they came, uh, Le Eric the Red, Leif sure. Erikson, and they, 1000 AD, they crossed the Atlantic, yep. certainly. Yep. Via during the Dark Ages. And during, during the Dark Ages, they had a medieval warming period. And, and, and called and the medieval and warming period. And Iceland, they were familiar with, too. They, sure. uh, they made that extension out. Sure, Greenland, Greenland's actually above Iceland. I mean, uh, yeah, Greenland's no, up in north. latitude, yeah, right. But, I mean, yeah. they went into that North Atlantic Ocean and, across, and sure. they crossed in a westward direction. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really interesting. They, we all come out of Africa 200,000 years ago. Homo sapiens. I think that's true. Do you think that? Or have you thought about it, Mike? I haven't really thought that about it. That the DNA all indicate. Also, linguistic overlay is that we're all descendants of... Uh, it's really staggering. A number of singularities of... Um, uh, uh, it could be actually uh, individual. The whole of 6 billion heading for 10 billion Homo sapiens or along the hominoid line are from Africa. And they were there for a long time. Then they went to Kazakhstan. In Europe, uh, For th there were some early people went to Australia. But they can trace it by the DNA. Mm -hmm. And they can get a reading of the migration of early mankind. And everything. Then a few people went across the Bering Strait, apparently. There's some people say they made these boats. Mm -hmm. They're not sure exactly how, but they went. And then they came into the New World, and those people had gone 95% of right around the world, the American Indian people, hmm. when they, you know, at the time. And to the westward, we'd hardly moved at all. Certainly in any singular way, we hadn't moved at all hmm. from our roots in Africa, which is almost on the line with Berlin or Paris, hmm. longitudinally. Sure. You know? So we hadn't moved at all. And then maybe the Phoenicians came, 2000, hmm. you know, there was that. Hmm. But then they, they, and then there was the uh, Vikings in 1000, and then... Columbus, right? Mm -hmm. And then everything's changed after 1492, Columbus. then everything hit the fan. They di it did. It yep. really did. It was a major paradigm shift. 500 years of westward expansion, mm -hmm. and they had the Enlightenment. Or they came in the midst of that and so forth. And then the ability to transform the environment, like all of the automobiles. I'm from Detroit, so we have... In fact, my, my, my mother, my mother was on 16th Street in Detroit, and mm -hmm. Henry Ford, when he was just about 10 or 12 years old, used to tinker in their garage. Really? And he was destined to go and create a, a, an assembly line efficiency, your economics assembly mm -hmm. line efficiency, to create these cars that are creating the sure. the carbon dioxide, and that's the thing. And that's going ex that's going almost hyperbolic now. Those capabilities to affect the environment. Well, man's production of CO2 <coughs> has has substantially increased. Yeah, with the with the I guess it was when we were burning oil lamps, there wasn't so much. It was the fossil fuels. Well, that's that's what the theory is. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I would, yeah. I would argue that if you look at what, what is the major producers of CO2, mm. um, sure, man has produced more CO2, mm. but Mother Nature is the vast producer of CO2. Well, that's from the photosynthesis, isn't it? Well, from us breathing. We're yeah. producing CO2. Oh, our breathing, yeah, uh, but it things goes decomposing in a CO2. Yeah. The yeah. oceans produce CO2. So, mm. so you know, you've got a phenomenon going on where the oceans are warming, mm. which isn't due to greenhouse or the greenhouse gas effect. Uh -huh. So what's so I, I would imagine the same thing that's heating the oceans is, is the same thing that's heating the atmosphere. More importantly, as you warm the oceans, it's producing it pumps out CO2. So Mother Nature is deliberately with a warming putting more CO2 in the atmosphere. That's really interesting. That's not that isn't I don't quite understand because I understand photosynthesis. They would use in the photo the plants would use CO2 uh, to create oxygen. But they also produce CO2. They do? Trees breathe, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Matter of fact, during the wintertime... That's what Mr. Reagan said. The trees were creating all the pollution, weren't they? Well, uh, National Academy of Science right now are saying that trees are causing the global warming. And I have that clip here if you want to take a look at uh, it. Oh, well... But more importantly, is just think about it. During the wintertime, the leaves fall off the trees. There's no photosynthesis going on. Those trees are still alive. Yeah. Cells, regardless, have to respire. They have to survive. So trees produce a tremendous amount of CO2. But Both don't they also create oxygen? They also create they, oxygen. They're the major, they're the lungs of the world, in these people say Actually, that. the oceans are. The oceans are. Well, they got a lot of photosynthesis they have a lot of going on, and plankton sure. and, and that kind of thing. So and, 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 but, but yeah. you know, they, they produce CO2, they produce oxygen. The natural diffusion of CO2 in the ocean uh -huh. is 15 gigatons, which is five times more than man produces as a whole. Trees breathing alone 
produces 10 times more CO2 than man does. So when you look at look at CO2, mm -hmm. it takes a very small fraction of a change in Mother Nature. You said something about twice the amount as what? The, the trees create twice Trees the... produce 10 times more CO2 than man does and breathing alone. That's interesting. And how much more oxygen does the trees produce? The man, than man, man doesn't produce Man doesn't oxygen. produce any. Yeah. And neither do our technologies, right? Our, our, you know, no. it's it's the photosynthesis process. Yeah. It's a neat kind of neat, neat mixing between uh, CO2 and oxygen. Sure, it, it's a yeah. symbiotic thing. Sure, I guess, right. Yeah. Yeah. But my point was, man, yeah. man produces very little CO2, and relative to Mother Nature, it's a drop in the bucket. So I think when you're given a situation like that, where you have man producing a fraction and Mother Nature producing all of it, I think what we should be looking at is a small change in Mother Nature versus the, the insignificant contribution by man. And then you start yeah. talking about his man impacted nature, and I would say yes in a very big way, and yeah. that's what's leading to global warming. It's not man burning fossil fuels, it's man tampering with nature. Uh, man tampering with nature, and man tampering with nature, again, back to that theme I tried to raise a little earlier, in a very unique Sure, but the way that we tamper with different the most, capability. yeah, but the most significant tampering we do with Mother Nature that that impacts the global warming, uh -huh. the greenhouse gas effect, right. is that we've in instilled um, fire prevention. Our forests have become far more dense. They've produced far more CO2 and water vapor, and that is what is causing the change in greenhouse gases <coughs> in the environment. It's really interesting. I'm learning here because I've never thought of the plants. I had this very simplistic model again jack of all trades and master sure. of hardly nothing, you know. Sure. But, I mean, I've always had this idea that the plants made the oxygen and there was a trade-off with the oxygen and the CO2 in that photosynthesis, bio, you know, symbolic, symbiotic relationship between the plants and the animals, but I guess I'm wrong. Well, matter of fact... Yeah, show me. you got a chart here. Yeah, so I've got, see, I'll show you one... When we get to your major premises and things, you know. I'll okay. show you the annual CO2 chart, and what you'll see is that CO2, CO2 swings all over the place throughout the, the year. See this swing? Now they're going to be able to see this on the yeah. screen? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. That's great. This, this okay. is CO2 since 1960. So there's no arguing that atmospheric CO2, according to the data, shows that, shows that um, CO2 has been increasing. It's gone from 320 parts per million to 380 parts per and million. what if you drew this chart back, that's 1960, what if you drew it back to 1800 or something? Where would it be in terms of that? Um, how far would that, hyper that's almost I, getting hyperbolic. I, I think I can, I can show you that here in a second, but let, mm. let, me, let me make my point. Mm. My point is that, yeah, as you can okay. see here, this is an annual cycle. CO2, mm -hmm. as you can see, ranges, by, and there's a variation of about 5% per year. And so what that's going is that's the trees breathing in, uh, breathing in their CO2 and then respiring. Is so this world or is this northern hemisphere? This, uh, this is this is more, more low, yeah. Right. But it, it's a pattern that's followed throughout the world. But what you it see is. here is that you see that CO2, yeah, CO2 uh -huh. basically goes through. It's like the Earth breathes in and then it breathes out. It breathes in and then it breathes out. So you can see Mother Nature. I mean, we're driving SUVs 24/7, but Mother Nature controls the atmospheric CO2 on a cyclical basis. And this would be, this would be character, this is uh, Hawaii. Well, that's know. characteristic worldwide. We're very interested in geography of spatial location, spatial relationships and things mm -hmm. and everything. Well, but this, this is would worldwide. be characteristic of the world. Yes, we're on the entire like a, world. Like Gaia. Sure, I mean, uh -huh. if, you, if you match this with ice cores, you find the same thing. You do, okay, that's sure. interesting. So um, you got a thing that goes back further? Um, mm, let me see if I can find it. Maybe you don't need they, it. They have the, they have the Vostok ice cores and you can, you can see how CO2 has behaved over the last, um, you know, six six hundred fifty thousand years. But that's not that's not going to address this. Six hundred thousand. Six hundred fifty thousand years. Ago. Really, that's a pretty long time. Well, here is the Vostok ice chart. And it go, um, th it this be? chart goes back four hundred thousand years. Okay. And you can see up here is CO2, and here is temperature. Now th those things are from the ice cores, is that? Ice cores, the Vostok ice cores. And this is the ice core that would go back that far. Sure. They actually, I believe they have Where one that goes back to Antarctica. Antarctica. It's called Vostok. There's mm -hmm. a they, they have a at the station, or something at the station uh -huh. in Antarctica. Uh -huh. Okay. So what you can see Isn't here. That amazing. Huh? Yeah. It's like geology. Yeah. It is. With ice. Yeah. yeah. Hey, here, here's yeah. here's Al Gore's chart uh -huh. that he uses in his movie. Now, once again, this is CO2, and he shows you on his chart that you're hitting record high CO2s. Uh -huh. CO, I'm sorry, record high CO2 level. Yeah. Right. Now. This is worldwide. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, well, this is from the Vostok ice cores. I see. Okay. Down here, he has temperature, and what I found interesting, and why, what I, what I 
found so no, interesting. This is showing on the screen. Okay, good to know. Okay. And what I found, what I found so interesting was, once again, here you have CO2, mm -hmm. here you have temperature, but if you look here on Al Gore's own chart, uh -huh. this is a temperature peak way before it is today, which is this horizontal line is the most recent peak, which is above where it is today. This is where we are today, but this is the previous peak above where we are today. And what you, when would that have been? That's, that's about 100,000. That's about 350,000 years. That's about when we were we weren't even uh, there was no Homo sapiens then. Sure, I mean oh, I'm not I'm not sure about we had that. Homo habilis and things or Homo, homo erectus or Homo habilis or Homo erectus, or, erectus yeah um, or Homo habilis. That's from which we come. Yeah, but we came um, in 200,000. Here's 200,000 years ago. Here. That's when humanity appeared. Okay, right here. Well, look, well, a single well, look here. Man, man, man uh, comes here and we fell into an ice age or uh -huh. uh, CO2 fell like a rock once man came on the face of the earth, right. according to that record. But Did my, my measure the here's what we call here. ice ages here? Sure. This little thing are the ice ages. Well, this, is the, this, them, right? this right here is the little ice age. That's the little that's, ice age. That's the middle age. That's the middle age. The little ice age hadn't little been age. taught when I was in school. We really? haven't been taught about that. That was just so recent. Huh. I mean, the other, well, the last of the ice ages ended around, the, what, 12,000 or something, 12,000 years ago? Yeah, the, the, the last major, the last major, the, worm or something ma the last no. major uh, ice age ended about twelve thousand years ago. And that, right. that brings up a big yeah. point. That's a good point because normally, and why I keep saying is we're lucky to have warming periods because, as you know, as a geologist, I'm not a geologist. I'm a geographer. Ge oh, geographer. Geog the geologist is very specialized on rocks. Okay. Geography. Is well, from the rocks, in everything. From the rocks, you should know that we have normally have ninety to one hundred thousand years of cooling. 12,000, 10,000 to 12,000 years of warming. So we are very fortunate to be living during a warming period and not have 12 feet of ice over our heads. Uh -huh. I come from Ohio where there used to be huge glaciers that covered Ohio. Isn't that what, well, back then they got moranes and everything remaining from that. And it That's where they down to about here in New York. This is a terminal moraine at New York. Sure. So the ice age, the glaciers would bring all the dirt down and they create rocks and everything. And it was about here was the limit of one of the ice age advances. Sure. And then it went back up into Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where the Great Lakes came from. Yeah. But here is, if you take a look here, you'll see that this temperature chart shows you that one, two, three, four, five temperature peaks but all occurred is, before okay. that are above where we are today. So Al Gore c refers to the Little Ice Age in that dimension? Yeah, well, he, he, this is his chart. That was in historic this, this times. Comes from, this comes from his book, An Inconvenient Truth. This is right out of his book. You so this is a copy it. of his book. I haven't oh. done anything to it. Okay. Matter of fact, if you so ever... they're making a big thing out of the Little Ice Age? They're making a big... That what they're telling you is that temperatures are at record highs, and yet uh -huh. Al Gore's own chart, you can see here, shows uh -huh. previous peaks well above <laughs> the current temperature. Uh -huh. And yet they're telling you that we're at record temperatures. We're not. They also tell you, and this shows you, that we're at record CO2 levels. And we that's were at a record temperature when Homo sapien appeared. Yeah, and then it started falling through the floor. Started getting cold. All went to hell after Homo yeah. sapien arrived. Yeah, right there. So there's a Mother man caused global fine. cooling yeah. back then. Well, man uh, caused a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 here's here's what Al man Gore's telling fine, you. We should say, right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, here's here's uh, Al Gore's. Well, he, this is that scene where he gets on that crane, goes up, and says, "Hey, look." I haven't seen so, it. I haven't seen. I haven't well, paid much attention to it. Well, in the movie, he gets up there and he shows that we're at a record high CO2. Yeah. Okay. Well, for a record high CO2 and CO2 causes temperature to be higher, wouldn't he have a chart that shows record high CO2s lead to record high temperatures? Mm -hmm. He doesn't have that. He shows a record high CO2 and temperatures are actually falling from the most recent peak. So during mm -hmm. a period of rapid increase in CO2s, CO2, Al Gore's own chart shows temperature falling. Now, how in the world do they reach the conclusion that by increasing CO2 leads to higher temperatures when he shows you a chart that shows increasing CO2 you made and a lot falling of temperatures. Of premises there. So you're, one of the major premises is CO2 creates global warming. Is that that's Al Gore's. That's his major premise. Is that a major premise? That's the whole theory of global warming. Okay, and it, and this this could call upon the guilt complex within people that it's all our fault for I'm burning a hundred watt light bulbs that or may running be. a SUV or something. Yeah, and that's well, that uh -huh. seems to be what. That, that seems to be what some people feel, and that seems uh, to be what they focus on. Man's yeah. causing it. We got to solve man's problem. Man is the fly in the ointment. Well, not well. Don't take my word for it. That's not my word. This well, is the is UN's only, word. You know, if I may, yeah. uh, Robert, I did this thing with Michio Kaku. He's a great physicist, and everything. And when I brought up this thing about is it possible that we could now wipe out the whole species, I did it almost throwaway. Mm -hmm. And he came, and he 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 he. he um, He's the co-founder of string theory. 
I mean, he was talking about parallel worlds. They get, and they have this, um, and he, he said, and he, 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 um, what do you call it? Um, he was studied, or mentored, he was mentored by Edward Teller. Okay. And they really understand those systems, those weapons. Systems. And he came back very firmly, and he said, no doubt, not just thermal, but they're germ things. And those are extensions of mankind's ability to affect things. Oh, sure. We're very effective. And he said, there's no doubt. And he said, no doubt that the whole species is gone if there's a Guns of August expansion. You know, uh, yeah. So that's extension. Couldn't do it in the Second World War. Just have in mind. They have to talk about now. But he said, not only that, but he said he thought that it's really possible that it could set off something that would destroy life. On this planet, man. I mean, you're talking about CO2. Like even no, no. I'm talking about the fact that we have systems that could, he said that it could destroy life. So mm -hmm. you get down to the smokers, where you have sulfur-based non-photosynthesis forms of life at the ocean deep, mm -hmm. way down there. Mm -hmm. It could destroy life itself. Hmm. So, with, with the point being, and that's at our ability to affect things. Sure. In well, a large-scale well, pattern is what I'm let's asking just, you to consider. Let's put this into a more near-term perspective. <coughs> As you just said, mm -hmm. man is impacting nature, right? In a big kind of existentially and, new and way. And here is, and, and Paul, if you show this, yeah. it shows you human blamed for climate change, okay? So right now, well, you've, yeah. got, you've got the intergovernmental panel of climate change no. telling you that man is the problem. Does that not bother you? Um, you well, got an intergovernmental man bothers problem. me a lot in general in terms of their juggling these capabilities and then never facing what the averse side okay. might be in terms of work well, with science. Well, we're going we're going with your theory here that yeah, mm -hmm. we can wipe the thing off, but let's paint a picture on how we could wipe things off. We've got the IPCC blaming man. We have another report that children are bad for the planet. They are we, nasty little things, aren't they? I mean, I mean, can you believe that children are bad for the planet? I can't think of anything more wonderful that's to the, the world than children. Fault. That's the ultimate. Yeah, and yet threat. the environmentalists will come out there and tell you children are bad for the planet. Then you've got another environmentalist who would like to see the world population drop to one billion. So this is the story that's in the press today. This is February 2nd, 2007. This was just the other day, May 7th, the other day. This is well, May sixth the other day so you've got mm. you've got them painting it and, and this is the most frightening one clip I've been able to find this is, is this in the more museum. frightening than the little babies are uh, are bad for the earth mm. now you remember that show silent, silent green. green I remember it well okay. well I'm painting a soiling green type scenario here mm -hmm. you, right here what does China say about global warming as you know China had what infanticide oh. okay you've got one child policy in China yeah, they do, yeah. they literally yeah. He said China's one child per couple policy introduced in the early 1980s for instance had a side effect of breaking global warming by limiting the population to 1.3 billion against a projected 1.6 billion for China. The so what you've already got is you already have a totalitarian state using global warming as a justification for infanticide. You d it doesn't take a leap well, it's of... it's not infanticide if they just limit one child. I mean, well, they, they had infanticide also. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's they, how they, I noticed that's it how they limited little one baby girls mostly. Sure, know? I mean they, that's how they limited. Mostly. I mean it's kind of hard to make sure you only have one child if you have people having babies all the time. But more importantly, my, my, my point is that I really want to drive home. Yes. Is you can already see, and especially how a totalitarian nation mm -hmm. can sit there and say global warming is bad. We can already control our population, justify infanticide on the basis of global warming. It doesn't take a leap to sit there and say you know what. I don't like how this country, they've got too many people producing CO2. Let's protect Mother Nature and go wipe that country off. That's how eugenics started. And you can see eugenics started out as this nice little theory about how we're going to help, you know, improve the race, the human race. There's a guy named Chamberlain. Sure. Well, I believe it all started with Darwinism. Well, Darwin, Survival well, of the fit yeah, but there evolved was, uh, into eugenics. And not, in not Neville Chamberlain, but there was another Chamberlain that was eugenics. Yeah. yeah. But the bottom line is you know where that left. Yeah. This is a, a touchy-feely well, science about how we can help people, and it ended up. Er, I it, like that. It, it, it ended yeah. up just destroying people uh, on a level that the world has never but seen. But that was done out of a kind of racial supermensch kind of notion of you know everybody sets up. Everybody well, says that we're the best, and they have all this fighting that goes on between the countries, and we're number one, 
even baseball teams. Sure. You ever see people fight about so in soccer? Sure. They fight and say we're number one, and they'll go and fight and everything, and then they'll and that's fight why armies. I'm, and that's why and I, that's what say, I'm afraid we're of. We're better than them. And there's the white man's burden of colonizing sure. period. That's sort of the James Joyce. I don't want to go into his. He said history is a nightmare from which I'm attempting to awaken. Hmm. Does that resonate at all with you or not? Well, I, Do you I, see I, us I, coming to a time of qualitative transformation in the evolution of universal consciousness without going to all the spirituality and stuff? I see us repeating the material level. I see us repeating the mistakes of the past. Uh -huh. This is this to me is eugen eugenics redux. They just have another reason to start implementing uh, population control. But if not control China policy. creates all the carbon dioxide, it's the United States. Why don't we just do it in the people? If in you're the China, States? if you're China, and you get the the I, the international government governmental panel of climate change, uh -huh. and you've got the entire world set on we got to stamp out this CO2. We got to stamp and, out. And this, you're in the entire evil, world. You know, you got to stamp. You got to stamp out, out the evil. You we may be going and doing nature's work by wiping out the species. That's exactly it may right. Be, it may be that's what the, and so that's what what the cosmic your, order calls so for. So what you're doing it with this global... It's probably happened in a lot of systems out in the universe where they get to a certain point yeah. where there's a qualitative but transformation it, where you can destroy the whole thing or transform mm -hmm. and go into a new level of consciousness or something, and they don't make the transition. Mm -hmm. That's why we never hear anything. Yeah. Well, I don't want to... I don't want to... Maybe we're meant... With, our purpose here was to de destroy ourselves. Well, I don't want to sit here and be the one supporting that. I, wanna, I don't either. I want to be the one here sitting here saying hold on a second here think about what we did with eugenics think <coughs> about what we're doing with global warming there are tremendous parallels together and how important truth is and how important truth is yeah. and important more most importantly is if you really look at the science it's not co2 it's water vapor water vapor is by far the most significant greenhouse gas so so let me sh explain why right, good and you're calling into premise you're calling in one of their major premises Sure, and, uh, and not I, a side premise or a sub premise, yeah. but a major well, premise. Well, I'm, I'm going to use their own research to All disprove right. their own theory, and and uh, and to lay out what their major premise is, which gets around, like you say, the CO2 was created by us, and we're the problem. Yeah, and this, these are the greenhouse gases. The whole theory. Great guilt trip. Yeah, the gr the whole theory is that greenhouse gases trap infrared radiation, leading to global warming. That's uh, the whole theory. Uh, the major premise is now what? That greenhouse gases trap yeah. infrared radiation. The greenhouse gases are like the carbon dioxide from automobiles and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you believe that water vapor is the most significant greenhouse gas? Have you ever even heard that? No, okay. I don't so think so. I did. I heard it on a program you did with Paula Gloria. Yeah. Okay, but, but I mean, besides it's getting that, out slowly, but it's sure. getting out. Yeah. Well, that's the message we have to get across, and mm -hmm. I'll show you why. This, this right here, are the charts of all the. Um, uh, various greenhouse gases. You have methane. And this is showing on the screen now. You have wonderful, methane. Wonderful. You have yeah. nitrous oxide. Uh -huh. You have oxygen and ozone. Uh -huh. You have. Did you know oxygen was a uh, greenhouse gas? Um, I, no. You. I, right I don't, there is. Uh, it, right there it is. And well, it is. Uh, I just lost it, Paul. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I don't know what what's going on here, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have carbon dioxide below that. Then you have water vapor below that, and you have the total atmosphere. I hope I can get that mouse back. Here it is. Mm. You have total atmosphere right here. Yeah. So what you have here is this is the greenhouse gas effect. This is the infrared radiation of our atmosphere. And you can see, Yeah. Okay. here you have the wavelength down here, mm. and that's the infrared wavelength. Mm. And this is infrared, yeah, I'm sorry. Infrared is basically the heating light. Mm. This is the light. This is the wavelength of light that is responsible for glow, the for, greenhouse gas for effect. For heating the environment. How yes. Many, how many um, as as far as uh, the total atmosphere. Yeah, is this a time thing along? The no, that's wavelength. It's wavelength. What does that mean? What is this vertical? Okay, on the vertical, what you have is the total absorptivity of the light, meaning that that's the amount of light that's that's being absorbed. So 100% would be one. Right now, unfortunately, I lost my little mouse here. You can't get the mouse to go. Okay, but here it is. There it is. Okay, here you have total. Here you have total atmosphere, and as mm -hmm. you can see, this is all the greenhouse gas effect. This is where C, uh, infrared is absorbed. So these are all the wavelengths of infrared that are being absorbed by our atmosphere. Okay. Well, the important thing is let's go up here to. Um, the peaks. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. You, the, the way you do it is view the entire area under this chart the entire area that fills this space. If you go up here, you can see water vapor is very similar to total absorption of the atmosphere. Then that's the H2O. Okay, this is water vapor, this is total, 100% match. Is water vapor H2O? H2O. Okay, you have water vapor, and right below it, 
is the total absorption. So as you can see, the, the left part of that chart to the left of that blue light, blue dot, is almost identical with total absorption and water vapor. And you can see, unfortunately, I lost that doggone mouse. Here it is. Okay, this is very similar to this, almost identical. Okay, this is very close to that. The only areas that are different from water vapor and this is that little area right there, and that is due to CO2. And this little area over here, that is due to CO2. So when they talk about man-made global warming, all they're talking about is this little tiny brown area and this little tiny red area. That is a small fraction of the entire area of this absorption. the normal cycle. Yeah, and oh. so, and remember, man only produces 5% of that little brown area, so it's oh. that little tip. So what they're telling what you is... What produces the rest? The, the ocean water vapor. And water. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and oh, the CO2, the oh. oceans. But my point is, if you look at this chart and you've got this causing global warming or this causing global warming, mm -hmm. any normal scientist would say, well, let's take a look and see, is anything done to change the water vapor content of the atmosphere? Mm -hmm. And has the water vapor content of the atmosphere changed? Water vapor. Okay. Yeah. Now, so if I look at this and I say, out of all the greenhouse gases, which are the ones th that you should worry about the most as far as global warming? Clearly, it's this. And then the you water have vapor. Water vapor, yeah. And then you have to ask yourself, has water vapor changed? Has it gone up along with CO2? And if it's a yes, then water you vapor is like humidity or humidity, or, yeah. or, yeah, or clouds and and fog clouds, and things humidity, like that. Things like right. that yeah. uh -huh, right. And so, so you, you can sit, you can sit there and you can say, okay, well they've got this argument that CO2 has increased since the beginning of the industrial age, uh -huh. but yeah, so has water vapor. So yeah. you've got two coral two coincident events going on, mm -hmm. the environmentalists choose to focus on CO2 when they really should be focused on water vapor, because that's the most important greenhouse gas, and it's been increasing along with CO2 during the industrial age, but water vapor has increased for a totally different cause. Mm -hmm. Water vapor has increased because of the increase of uh, growth stock or vegetation in the northern hemisphere, and that is due to the fact that we have something that is called fire prevention. So if you throw out the idea that CO2 is the cause, which I just showed you why you should, and focus on water vapor, you have to focus on what's the major cause of water vapor. Water vapor is almost exclusively caused by evaporation from the sun and trees and plants through what's called transpiration. And as you can see, this is the, ga this is the growth stock of the world. And as you can see, this comes from the University of Helsinki, you can see that the northern hemisphere has become a has become substantially greener by a wide margin. Well, what, what is the green showing? A stock? growth a, a growing stock. What's growth, growing stock? Growing stock is the actual amount of vegetation. And you always hear about this deforestation. Well, th we have deforested some areas, but we also have not only increased forestation, also the density of our forests have have gone ballistic. Um, the Bitterroot Forest alone is 11 times That's the a location. Bitterroot is a forest. Iowa or no? I, you, I, it's a bitter, the, Idaho? Yeah, the, the Bitterroot Forest. It's like the Yellowstone Forest, right. the Sequoia right. Forest. Right. Our, our forests change, have right. become more dense, mm. more trees per acre, mm. more water vapor producing yeah. trees. Do you know that at the time of the, of the pilgrims in 1620, mm -hmm. a squirrel could have gone up a tree in Plymouth? And gone all the way to the Mississippi River without touching ground. Sure. And yet we got we got as much we got a, we got as much as that now. You know. We have not acreage but density. That's really something. Go all the way to the Mississippi River without touching ground. Sure. There were, and all those. Maybe it's density. Mean What's mean the mean. The okay. Well, what, what you're talking about is the acreage. You have you have a, a lot wide, of trees. Uh, yeah, you have a, not only, not necessarily a lot of trees, but acreage where there are a lot of trees. Mm. You might have one acre with two trees on it where the squirrel could go, jump from one to the other. Now you no That's longer a have a pretty big jump. You have to be a flying squirrel. Okay, but you, you, my, my, my point is that you, let's say before you had 10 acres per tree, yeah. now you've got 110 acres of trees per acre. Uh -huh. So you have a lot more trees producing water vapor. Is tree farming and everything? And that no, just, no, just fire just prevention. Uh, Smokey the Bear. Uh, Smokey the Bear is the cause of all this. I used to I used to be like, they got the sun as the source of all the energy, right? 20, 93 million years of light, a million miles away. And you have 
And when you come to the atmosphere, they've got long rays and short rays. Were you aware of that? So that the Earth is heated not directly from the rays of the sun, but they, the rays come through as long rays, and they don't affect the atmosphere, the temperature. They heat the Earth, and then they're re-radiated as short Well, it's, rays. It's, it's the opposite. Is the, it, well, then the, the high short energy, rays, yeah. The, the high energy, you, as you, as you yeah, shorten the wavelength, you have higher energy light, higher energy light. So what we're doing is we're capped during the daytime where you have visible light, uh -huh. which is the shorter wavelength, yeah. higher energy. Okay. It's coming in and being absorbed. So I had it opposite night. of what it is. Yeah, and so it, you're getting warmed up yeah. during the but day. But the atmosphere is heated from the Earth up, not from directly from the sun. That's the greenhouse gas effect. Yeah, right. Okay. So, I mean, that's, but, but if that's you go, if you go out, function. if you go that's out in the generalized principle that we could uh, read. Well, if, if you go out and the sun hits you, you get hot, and that has nothing to do with heat coming up from the that ground. That is true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the atmosphere itself. That's yeah, why it has nothing to do with the atmosphere. That's why when you go up a mountain, it's it's colder. Sure. Even though you're closer to the sun. Sure. But it's being heated from the the atmosphere is heated from the Earth up. Yeah, and the well, and for, well, well the that's at nighttime. The, most of this is at the nighttime because what's going on is the infrared radiation is being re-radiated back out, uh -huh. and so that's the problem. Well, overall, um, and then the rate of the Earth uh, absorbing it is much more than the oceans. It gets more diffused in the oceans and water. Well, the so oceans absorb and hold the heat better. Yeah, they do. The oceans will take longer to cool, but the oceans have been warming. They're also. very moderating on temperature. Yeah. In terms of. Okay. Right, well, well here, go. here, here is it. Ten minutes to go. Here, here is ten minutes to go. Okay, good. That's here, good to know. Here okay. is a chart that's, uh, that's interesting. We've got to give you some of your facts in here. Now, okay, well, here, I've been ruminating too much. Here's, here's one, uh, one of the facts. You can mm -hmm. see that the sun is warmer now than in the past 11,400 years. Uh -huh. Okay, wouldn't you think th that if the, if the sun is near a, a 11,400 years high, that the earth would also be warming? Okay, does that no. have anything to do with CO2 at all? I would think not. Not at all, right? Uh -huh. Now let's take a look at some other facts. Now the other interesting thing that you'll run into is that not only is the Earth warming, but the solar system as a whole is warming. That's interesting, and isn't it? Is yeah. that really true? We know sure. that. And right here is just the an whole example. Solar system. So, well, but they they have evidence uh -huh. that Mars is warming and Pluto is warming. Uh -huh. Here are the ice caps on Mars. We just did a thing with Carter Emmert the other day with the mm -hmm. auto visualization at mm -hmm. the Hayden Planetarium. It is fantastic. That's the largest display screen in the world. Huh. Or did one of the ones. And they got and this year's the thing, you put it on there with music, you'd have a real show. So what you gotta do is get the facts right. Mm -hmm. And they've only it's all the play, that's the largest display oh. screen. Well maybe we so could show that up there. But this yeah. this yeah. shows yeah, this you could shows do that. And, and with your voice, you're very good sure. for that. You could be a nut like you know, like some you know, like uh, Charlton Heston or something. <laughs> you could do it. But to get the facts right, mm -hmm. and that's what you're arguing really, sure. is that they're facts and they're very important issues and everything. You're trying to put them in a comprehensive context. Try, not only and comprehensive, but in a way that people can understand. We only got a couple minutes left, unfortunately. Sure. You see, you're a very interesting fellow. It's easy to talk and everything. But the thing is, the major premise is, a major premise in a political, realistic sense, is that the theme that Mr. Gore is advancing with inconvenient truth and a lot of the Democratic Party and a lot of um, also well, almost is, both parties is, now is yeah it's almost becoming holy writ or almost like scientific truth yeah. and the basic premise of that is questionable at a legitimacy level sure and, and the basic grounding what do you call it, generalized principle sure. is incorrect the very the, the is very that a, is that your basic premise yeah the very okay. foundation of 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 the the greenhouse gas effect being ca caused by CO two is wrong all right and, uh, and the evidence shows that. It's just that whether you choose to look at the evidence or not, Mars warming is just one of the pieces of, of the evidence that it's not global warming, it's solar system warming. Uh -huh. um, that's a larger context. Sure, and that's due to the sun. Uh -huh. okay. Well, here's the chart, and this is basically just shows, uh -huh. uh, I can't get the mouse up, but this shows you the polar ice caps. You know, you're worried about us. This uh, is us, Mars? This is Mars. Uh -huh. You're worried about us losing our polar ice caps with Mars. Those are polar ice caps? Yeah. I mean, is that, but uh, wait a minute, ice? Yeah. yeah and water? Uh, that's, that's actually water? that's actually or a C it? that's a CO2 uh, okay, ice cap. Yeah, it's not water. Yeah. No. Um, they don't know for sure. But right there it is. Yeah. A April 29th, so 2007. So that's the basic that's the basic premise. And then is it possible to say that the whole thing about uh, like there's a lot of people who take exception to that. Webster Tarpley takes exception to it, and all he doesn't take exception. He what? takes exception. Well, he only believes in this one, but he, he doesn't believe. Well, I think everybody. No, he does, uh, what I'm saying he does not. I'm, take, I'm saying he believes he takes exception as does Robert 
to the global warming thesis is being advanced and and so does yeah uh, that's exactly what it is the church of global warming uh, so yeah and so does who's that uh, larouche La yeah. larouche takes exception to it and so i think might take uh, love lock and they're saying and one thing that's going to get people used to the idea that you better live with a five watt light bulb yeah. rather than a 10 watt you're wasting it's your fault and they're going to put the guilt on all the people well it, and it's got political legs it gets worse than that where you got all these injustices because the system isn't structured right because they don't have generalized principles that apply that informs the world citizenry well is that it, a larger premise in which all that could be put or not yes and we need to have generalized principles that are in keeping with what's required if we're not going to blow the thing up yeah okay it, that's it, a good it, general it, idea. and it gets even worse when you're talking about the controls and the things that they want and it's not only this light bulb that they yeah, want you, you to got, replace. You got this light bulb. You don't need that. You can get by with one yeah. candle. It gets, you can it use gets a, a lot worse than that, though, Alan. Look, they candle. want you to use it's one tissue every time you go to the restaurant. Right, but that's, that's a that guilt trip thing. And it's also people realize that the system we have in place is not appropriate. It's not just. Mm -hmm. I saw President Carter say, they asked Mr. Moran, do we live in a system of elemental justice and mm -hmm. where the trend for elemental justice for the whole system, all of humanity and the ecology, mm -hmm. do we have it in order? Do we know what we're doing? Do we form capital and do economics mm -hmm. and everything? And he said, of course not. We do not live in a just system. And the trends are not going that way. Mm -hmm. So people sense that at a very deep level. So they want to find somebody to blame. Politicians can put it off on you and I for burning a 10-watt sure. light bulb. Yeah, mo exactly. And yeah. more. And here's just another example. The Greens demand a 20-hour speed limit, 20 mile per hour speed limit. Mm -hmm. Are you going to want to drive around 20 miles per hour? I'm not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to go tax cows? I mean, you're going to tax cow farts now. Our yeah. far they're going to tax our farmers. Look at this. The Is New that Zealand the methane they take off. Yeah, they New Zealand the methane they get methane from this, the cows. This is as long as the poor Jersey cow. This shows you how extreme the they they yeah. can go. Yeah. I mean, New Zealand flatulence tax. Uh, flatulence. That's right. I couldn't even the tell flatulence you. Flatulence tax. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I couldn't even t I couldn't even make that up. I know. You know that's <laughs> it's great grist for the satiric <laughs> thing for yeah. the Daily Show and whatnot. And exactly. But they're taking it very seriously, and yeah. they got a political thing to run on, and it's sure. existential challenging.